So on January 28th, the night President Trump announced his entry ban on citizens of seven Muslim-dominant countries, Prime Minister Trudeau tweeted, to those fleeing persecution, terror, and war, Canadians will welcome you regardless of your faith. Diversity is our strength. Welcome to Canada. What exactly did the Prime Minister mean, and how literally should we take his statement? Great question. Uh, it's essentially, he was restating the choice that we have made as a country. And I think today, uh, all the uh, all the middle income and and and, uh, and uh, very affluent societies all over the world face two stark choices. One is to shut off uh, the borders, close doors, close our hearts, and, and basically turn off uh, the desire to welcome people, welcome talent, welcome skills, uh, not just refugees, but just any newcomer. And the other choice is to be open to new ideas, be open to, to welcoming people, to welcoming a record number of uh, international students, and having the space in our hearts to welcome refugees and make that really long-term commitment. Integrating refugees is not a one-year process, as, as has been stated. But it, it, it's a tough choice to make, but it's the right one. And I think what the Prime Minister was trying to say in that uh, tweet, with that limitation of a tweet, was a restating of the Canadian choice to say, we stand squarely on the side of welcoming others, and we will stand by that principle no matter what. Um. In the middle of this this project, this the Syrian um, refugee project that the Canadian government encouraged, um, right in the middle of it, the government and this is this is just before you became minister, I believe, the government decided to turn off the tap, and there were many um, sponsorship groups, including some I know who are here, yes. who were really angry because the government had had invited people, asked citizens to step forward, and then decided, okay, we've been generous enough. Why, what was behind that? Why, in the face of such generosity, did, did the government decide to shut it down? So first of all, the private sponsorship of refugees did not emanate from the Canadian government. This is something that happened uh, between 1975 to 1979 when we welcomed uh, 60,000 Vietnamese boat people. And the response of ordinary Canadians, church groups, community organizations, to welcome them and integrate them to their infrastructure, not the government's infrastructure, was the, was the beginning of the private sponsorship of refugees in Canada. So this wasn't and was never initiated by, by the government. Uh, secondly, on this, on this issue, I think what uh, what needs to be clarified is that private sponsorship does not n mean that the government does not incur uh, a cost. The cost is roughly half of what uh, it takes to, uh, to, to bring in a government-assisted refugee. But it's still there. There is uh, there's roughly, uh, I think the difference is, uh, the government-assisted refugee costs roughly about $25,000 from the processing to the referral to the transport and so on, uh, while private sponsored refugee costs about 12500 uh, So that's one. And the second is, as a country, we have to make sure that we, one of the reasons why Canadians continue to support uh, our overall immigration policy, whether it comes to refugees or uh, to the economic class, is an understanding that our refugee and, and Im other immigration programs will be well planned, well, or, uh, well organized, and executed in a, in a more managed manner. And we, we therefore have essentially e any given year we have a national consultation process where we determine not only the right number of people to accept into our country permanently, but also what that mix would be, the mix between the family reunification, the humanitarian side, and the economic side. And within that framework, uh, we had to take into consideration 
uh, the, the numbers of privately sponsored refugees. I must say my previous, uh, my predecessor as Minister of Immigration, the Honorable John McCallum, used to go around the world and say that he's the only immigration minister in the world who uh, couldn't bring refugees fast enough to meet the demand of, of Canadians. So I want to thank the unrecognized, the unprecedented generosity of Canadians when it came to the Syrian Refugee Initiative. We could have never reached the number that we did with 40,000 had it not been for the private sponsorship of refugees. But to address that need for that, that generosity, to meet that demand, this year we have uh, almost quadrupled the number from, pre from the previous government when it comes to the allocations set aside for uh, private sponsored refugees in our immigration uh, planning.